Finally tonight, we return to a subject on many minds these days, the financial crisis. Our economics correspondent, Paul Salman, checked back in with one particularly prominent voice in the investment world and his colleague who guided his thinking. Here's the pair's sobering conversation on what may lie ahead. One of the world's hottest investment advisors these days, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, author of The Black Swan, who's been warning of a crash for years, betting on one and winning big. He's been ubiquitous in the financial media of late, from cable TV's Colbert Report to the BBC's Newsnight, where he was infuriated by what he called bogus accounting. The first thing I would get immediately, immediately, I would suspend something called value at risk, quantitative measures of risk used by banks immediately. We sat down with Taleb and the man he calls his mentor, mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot, pioneer of fractal geometry and chaos theory. And even more than feeling vindicated, they're both scared. I don't know if we're entering the most difficult period since, uh, uh, not since the Great Depression, since the uh, American Revolution. The most serious situation we've been in since the American Revolution? Yeah. Professor Mandelbrot, can that possibly be true? It's very serious. Sir. More serious than the Great Depression, possibly? Possibly. I hope not. Cotton and the farmer to grow the cotton. Mandelbrot's key insight came in the 60s with a study of cotton price surges and plunges suggesting the world moves in fits and starts, especially the human world. Decades later, after the stock market crash of 1987, Taleb came to the same conclusion. He appeared on the news hour two years ago to help explain the death of a hedge fund before the current crisis. He dubbed the event a black swan. Impossible, Europeans had always thought, because they'd never seen one. We saw a lot of white swans. Every white swan was confirming that, you know, hey, all swans were white. Taleb's book, published in April 2007, was called The Black Swan because in 1697, Dutch explorers discovered Australia and black swans. And sure enough, they saw that black bird and say, hey, one single observation, okay, can destroy thousands of years of confirmation. So likewise in the market, all you need is one single bad month to destroy years of track record. In the book, Taleb wrote, the increased concentration among banks seems to have the effect of making financial crises less likely but when they happen, they are more global in scale and hit us very hard. True, we now have fewer failures, but when they occur, I shiver at the thought. The banking system, the way we have it, is a monstrous giant built on feet of clay. And if that topples, we're gone. Never in the history of the world have we faced so much complexity combined with so much incompetence in understanding its properties. But there's been complexity before. There's been overextension of credit before. We've had crashes in American history many times before. We're a resilient system. Won't we pull out of it? Let me tell you why it's not like before. Look at what's happening. The world's getting so fragile that a small shortage of oil, small, can lead to the price going from $25 to $150. A barrel. A barrel. A small excess demand in an agricultural product can lead to an explosion in price. We live in a world that is way too complicated for our traditional economic structure. It's not as resilient as it used to be. We don't have slack. It's over-optimized. What do you mean by over-optimized? Let me tell you what is happening in the ecology of the banking system. They're swelling to large banks, okay, because it's vastly more optimal to have one large bank than ten small banks. It's more efficient. Well, we've certainly seen the consolidation of the industry. Exactly. And that consolidation is what's putting us at risk because we are, uh, when one bank, large bank makes a mistake, okay, it's 
ten times worse than a small bank making a mistake. And I guess I'm realizing that that's where your famous work comes in. It's always been characterized, or the work that you're central to, as the, the butterfly somewhere disturbs a little bit of air and halfway across the world a tornado hits or something, right? Is that what we're talking about here? Something very similar. And the word turbulence is one which actually is common to physics and to social sciences, to economics. Every, everything which involves turbulence is enormously more complicated, not just a little bit more complicated, not just one year more of schooling. It's just enormously more complicated. Per turbulence is why, because it's badly understood, weather forecasters can't necessarily get it right. Precisely, in fact, the, 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 basic, the basis of weather forecasting is looking from a satellite and seeing a storm coming, but not predicting that the storm will form. The behavior of economic phenomena is far more complicated than the behavior of liquids or gases. So, getting back to your fundamental work and insight, this is a system that can become turbulent or is inherently turbulent that doesn't have enough of a buffer and that's the danger? That is not well understood. In fact, that is misunderstood for which tools have been developed which assume that changes are always very small. If one of them comes, nothing bad happens. If several of them come together, very bad things can happen. And the theory does not take account of that. And the theory doesn't take account of very large and sudden changes in anything. The theory thinks that things move slowly, gradually, and can be corrected as they change. Whereas, in fact, they may change extremely brutally. Now you understand why I'm worried. I hope I'm wrong. I, I'm, I'm, I wake up every morning. Actually, I don't wake up every morning now. I start to wake up at night the past couple of weeks, hoping that I'm wrong, begging to be wrong. I think that we may be experiencing something that is vastly worse than we think it is. And we think it's pretty bad. It's, it's worse. All the books you read on globalization, they talk about efficiency, all that stuff, they don't get the point. The network effect of that globalization, okay, means that a shock in the system can have much larger consequences. What is the doomsday scenario? I mean, what actually happens tomorrow, next week? The, I mean, I, I am convinced there have been a package recently of 700 billion. That's pocket money. Because you don't understand, they don't understand that the ripple effect that hedge funds have, okay, that the banks not lending to hedge funds will force hedge funds to liquidate positions. Sell off. Sell off position. These positions sold off by hedge funds will impact other entities. Driving down the price. Driving down the price. Driving down some prices. That a, a supermarket, okay, needing funding will not be able to find a bank solvent enough to lend them money against inventory to make payroll. Okay, that you, you, you may have chain reactions we never imagined before. And these come from the intricate relationships in the system we don't understand. You've been around a lot longer than we have. Uh, that's possible. Is it likely? Well, we don't know the probability. Uh, we don't have enough knowledge. We don't have enough information. We don't have enough, uh, enough reliable information. On, uh, on data which are not published. Uh, I mean, I sleep better perhaps than Nassim, but uh, I don't sleep very well. Is it possible that what's also unimaginable, which is that this will simply write itself, is that a possibility? Everything is a possibility. I mean, again, it is not, I'm, I try to speak to my best to answer questions which are uh, scientific and which I can respond to and which, which have scientific evidence and not personal opinion, everything is imaginable. I, of course, a joke that 
uh, prediction is very e very easy when you predict the past or something. Well, yeah, uh, predictions uh, predictions are predictions are difficult, particularly about the future. That's what I wanted to remember. Benoit Mandelbrot, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.